Solomon was providing nuggets of wisdom that I believe every single human being needs to grasp because it's going to affect some part of your life. And one thing I love about the Proverbs is that they're so real and practical. We're actually taking the time to go through this first uh, chapter of Proverbs and look at what Solomon was actually dealing with and what he was talking to us about and how it affects our lives in very specific ways. Some stuff, God just let it just bust up and just start all over again. Why? Because the only thing I can do now is make beauty out of those ashes. <laughs> I'm not going to fix it. I'm not going to repair it. I'm going to make it all over again. Thank you, Lord. So those times when it feels like everything's going wrong, relationship, especially in relationships, I've learned that sometimes God will just take some people just totally out of your life and just bring in all new people. Ain't it good? And we're so distraught. No, no, God, I don't want to lose him. I don't want to lose her. I don't want to lose them. Ah, God's like, not from where I'm taking you. From where I'm taking you, it's a whole new crew. Giving you family that you didn't even know you had. Just going to start all over again. Ain't God good? Thank you, Lord God. Yes, Lord God. Sometimes he'll have to do us like Joseph. You know, we all know the story of Joseph. His brothers just hated him, sold him into slavery. So it was God setting it up all along. Joseph ends up in Egypt, in Potiphar's house, then ends up in prison. Next thing you know, the man is prime minister. And why did God allow it? Just with the words that came out of Joseph. You did it for evil. But God did it for good. Sometimes God, that's what he's doing with us. He's allowing relationships to be broken up and busted up so that he can actually save us. And we don't even know it. He's doing something in a sovereign way. And so Jacob was broken hearted. His boy is gone. He thought he's dead and don't know that God let the relationship be. God let the man. That's the thing about it. Think about that. God could speak sovereignly to Jacob. God even let Jacob see angels marching up and down out of heaven. But God didn't tell Jacob that Joseph was still alive. Why? God let him live with that broken heart and that shattered dream. God let him live with it. God let him live with it because of something that he was doing inside of Jacob's heart and Joseph's heart. As we all know, Jacob was such a trickster and a deceiver and everything. By the time he found out that Joseph was still alive, Jacob didn't, Jacob, he was just, I'm just glad he's alive. I, I'm just glad. He no more playing games and trying to trick nobody, nothing. God kept bringing Esau, Jacob, through, Jacob through that situation. Through, he did it as he worked with him through his brother Esau because he had broken relationship with his brother Esau. But God brought Jacob to a point of being reconciled with Esau. And he bring him to a point of being reconciled with his entire family to the point where finally, at the final days of his life, he was able to speak a word over all of his sons. But he wasn't ready to do that before. <laughs> he was not ready to do that. And that's what I'm getting at. All of what we've been going through, God is working his purpose. So ask God to show you what has sheared you and ask God to show you what has sheared your relationships and ask God to show you how shearing has affected your outlook on life. Thank you, Lord. Just say this. God is working on me. Come on, just say it again. God is working on me. Thank you, Lord. God, you're working on me. That's the assurance that we have.